hi and welcome back to my channel i thought i would vlog today uh it's a bit of a chilly day today i feel like winter is definitely coming but i have just spent the morning editing my grocery video which you would have already seen drinking um, a coffee and having some easter egg because if you go to the grocery store about a week and a half after easter it's a gamble because they may not have any but sometimes they have the lint easter bunnies for really cheap so I bought a couple, they were $2 each. So that was a great deal. I had a little bit with my coffee. I'll put the rest into the fridge for Mike when he gets home. But yeah, I've had a pretty relaxing morning. It's already quarter past 11, but I still thought I would vlog today. And I thought I would start off today's vlog, vlog. <laughs> I thought I would start off today's vlog by sharing my sinking funds with you. So I did a budgeting video probably about a year ago and I, Pretty much do the same thing. I still use the spreadsheet that I got off Etsy but I am doing some cash sinking funds. I'm just I find uh, another New Zealand channel called the Joy Ninja. I will leave her channel linked down below. I find her so inspiring. I watch her videos every Sunday and Wednesday. She usually uploads them in time for me to listen to them while I'm doing the dishes <laughs> and I really love it. Uh, so I definitely recommend her channel. I will leave it linked in the description box but she just inspires me with her cash envelopes so i wanted to have some in cash and then i have some online so i thought i would just quickly tell you what i have in case that helps anyone luna is chewing a blanket behind me on the couch she is getting better at not scratching the couch i've tried different things we'll probably get some kind of protection for the corners of the couch we've also put her old under my arm <laughs> cat tree there and she's been scratching that a lot so that's good but I've had lots of suggestions of what we can do to help Luna have more things to scratch and also protect the couch so that's great but anyway <laughs> um sinking funds so yeah I keep most of them online but have some in cash so I thought I would just share those with you today uh so in this little one I don't keep a lot of cash because this is kept at home uh but I'll Tell you what i have in here some of them are longish term like christmas and things so once that gets to a certain amount i will deposit it into the bank and then if you can see here i have uh, little cat stickers on some of them because you're never too old to have stickers and that means that that sinking fund is finished so it's all ready to go <laughs> so in here i have uh tobias's birthday we save 300 dollars each for each of the boys and that doesn't include their birthday dinner. We usually go out as a family for dinner, but it does include if they want to do something with their friends so they can have less presents and do something with their friends or yeah, $300 is what they have to spend on their birthday. So I have Tobias's birthday. I have uh, Christmas 2024, which we aim to save between 800 and a thousand dollars, but that also includes uh, petrol. If we're traveling to see family, it includes uh, food for over Christmas and things like that so not just gifts but everything to do with Christmas uh, we have home which I just use for cleaning products or I don't know light bulbs and batteries we have family clothing which I just emptied pretty much because we bought the boys winter wardrobe and everything that Mike and I need uh, we have my birthday which is funded Mike and I just get a hundred dollars each to spend on something that we want and we can save extra if we want to add that and get something larger for our birthdays. So Mike and I's little sections both have cats on them because that's done. Uh, then we have family birthday. So I, that never really gets over 50 to $100 because um, we use that for family birthdays. I have the boys teacher gifts that's already funded. We just get each uh, teacher uh, like a $25 voucher uh, from a store that they like. And then at the back is Mike spending cash uh, what didn't I mention? Oh, I didn't mention Lachlan's birthday. That is finished. We have uh, the $300 for his birthday all done. And I keep this hidden. <laughs> so I'm not too worried about it uh, being stolen or anything. Uh, so yeah, that's my cash sinking funds. So I keep track of those. I don't keep track of my spending money. I just put it in there. Uh, my spending money is in an online thing. So I'll explain that. So for our online sinking funds, I just have a separate bank account called online sinking funds, surprisingly enough. And I just put all the money in there, but I have it written down uh, how much is in each section. So I know how the account is divided up. 
So I'm going to be looking down here because I have it written down. But I have one for a Lachlan school because he's starting intermediate next year, which means he will need to wear a school uniform. I have had questions about that before. Most primary schools in New Zealand do not wear uniforms, so uh, that's why we haven't had to buy one. Then I also have a fund for Lachlan's glasses because he sees the optometrist every year and he didn't need a new prescription this year, but he will next year. Uh, then I have my personal money and I keep that online because most of the time when I buy stuff for myself, I purchase it online, uh, whereas Mike prefers to have cash, so that's fine. Uh, we have a medical fund, which is for things like the dentist. Healthcare in New Zealand is free. <laughs> uh, it's free for the kids. Mike and I pay about $30 when we go to the doctor. Uh, we have to pay for optometrists, dentists, just out of pocket, the full amount. But uh, anything like hospital care, births, anything like that is uh, all free in New Zealand because we've paid for it with our taxes. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what our medical fund is for. I have one for birthday dinners because like I said, that doesn't come out of our birthday money. I save up for that and then the four of us go out for dinner for each of our birthdays. Uh, Mike and I have a date night uh, fund which pretty much caps at about $100 and every time we have that in there, which isn't very often, <laughs> we'll go out and watch a movie and have dinner or something like that. Uh, I have a haircut fund because the boys get all their haircuts at the same time and it's about $90 when they go and get a haircut, so I just have a little sinking fund for that. Uh, I have housing association because we live on a private road and we have to pay for gardeners and things like that so we have a fee every year that we have to pay uh, i have a sinking fund for luna for her vet uh, visit so when she gets her annual checkup uh, for her dry food or any toys or anything like that comes out of her sinking fund we have one for fiji which is taking a long time but we want to go to the fiji it's just that things keep getting prioritized uh, before that like the sofa uh, we have a car fund that is just for car repairs. Uh, we have rates, so our council rates that we pay every three months, uh, which is like the property taxes, I guess. Uh, we pay that. I have a really fun sinking fund this year for a yarn advent calendar. So I'm not sure, I've never bought one before, but I think you have to pay for them maybe in July or August, and you get in December a box of mini like 20 gram of yarns and you get one to open each day and then you can make something so uh, i really wanted to do that last year but it's about 250 or 300 dollars for the yarn advent so i've just been putting small amounts of my personal money into a separate yarn advent uh, account and then this christmas i will be able to do that which i'm pretty excited about uh, we have another fund for uh, lachlan's dentist so uh, dentists are free in New Zealand up to the age of 18 unless you need orthodontic work and Lachlan will need braces we've been told so we're already saving up for that because that'll happen in the next four or five years I'm guessing uh, then I have a school holiday fund for doing fun things then and then a new one I've just started is Lachlan camp so he's going on a school camp and the school's kind of warned us that it's going to be more expensive this year it is a donation. They can't actually force us to pay it, uh, just the way the school donation system works in New Zealand. But I do want to pay it. <laughs> so I have started to save up for that. So yeah, I feel like that was a long ramble, but that is all of our sinking funds. Uh, so yeah, that's that. <laughs> and now while i'm sitting here i may as well give you a little knitting update don't worry if you're not into knitting it's going to be really quick so i'm just going to show one thing well actually two things because i just finished a hat let me go and grab it okay so i had to open the door because i'm actually getting a bit hot now and something is hurting my eyes i got a new moisturizer which you'll see in the everything i bought in april video but i think it's i think i got it too close to my eyes and it's dripping down or something Anyway, I um, made this hat, which is my third Oslo hat. So I feel like I'm really good at making these now. I made this out of just leftover yarn from my Lento sweater. And all I had to do was buy the mohair for it. But I really like it. It turned out quite big. So I actually just put it in the dryer. I felt like I was throwing caution to the wind where I just flung it in there. 
but I don't know, something just came over me where I didn't care. And I put it in there and it shrank really nicely. And yeah, oh, looks a bit crooked, but that is my Lento hat. And I think I'm done with hat knitting for a while. I would like a red hat. Ooh, there's some crazy things to my already wind blowing here. But yeah, I would like a red hat, but that'll be later on in the year. And then what I'm working on now uh, was meant to be a cardigan, but I just couldn't get gauge uh, with this yarn like I thought I was going to. Uh, if you don't know anything about knitting, this is going to sound like a different language, but the pattern was an unspun yarn and I was trying to use spun yarn and it just wasn't going to work. So I frogged that and I'm just making another novice sweater because I made a brown one that was the first sweater I've ever made and I wish I had made it just one size up. I wish it was just a little bit more oversized. So I'm making a second one and this is really good kind of mindless uh, knitting and also I'm getting much better at the increases and things so it's quite good to make another one just to like hone my skills a little bit better. Uh, so yeah it's got the little flex, can you see that, of the different colors and I'm holding that with uh, some mohair. So it's going to be really nice and I will uh, sew the collar down so it won't be as big. But I'm really liking that. It is going to be quite a bit bigger than my first one and I may not make it as long. I might make it a bit more cropped. But I'm just on the body. I have one of my little ghosts on here. Well actually I have a couple of little ghosties. They can't see it. Let's see if I better. This pink one's really cute. Uh, little ghost stitch markers that I make. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm working on at the moment and I'm pretty much only working on this now that my hat's finished. So I'll show you this when it's finished. I do have quite a bit of leftover yarn for other things that I feel like is a bit much to put into my blanket. So I might make, I have tried to make fingerless gloves before, but then I thought I wouldn't wear them, but I may just make some and if I don't wear them, donate them, but I'd quite like to learn how to do that. And we're not gonna talk about my sock project because I ripped that back and I haven't restarted it yet. So we're gonna pretend the socks don't exist, but be really happy about the lovely sweater that I'm making. So that is the knitting update. And while we're on the kind of subject of crafting, I'm going to show you what I'm about to do now. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I mentioned in a previous vlog that I'm going to be selling the project bags that I make at a yarn market, which happens uh, a couple of times a year, I think in different places maybe. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna be doing the one near where I live and it's gonna be the first time that I sell my bags at a market, but I used to do art markets with my artwork in my 20s. That was one of my main forms of income. So I'm pretty used to selling things at markets, but I have never done it with my project bags. So I don't know, even if I don't sell a lot, it's just a fun experience to be around people who really enjoy the same things as you. So yeah, I just started thinking about how I'm gonna set up my display because I've paid for quite a small table because it's my first one and I don't know how it's gonna go. So I have to kind of display things in a very small space. So yesterday I just went and got a couple of items because again, I don't wanna have a whole lot of stuff that I then have to store. And if it doesn't go well and I decide to not do any other markets, I don't wanna have things that are not gonna be used. So I just got everything from Kmart. It was really inexpensive. I got two of these wooden crates. So let me take things out. Uh, two crates like this because I thought I could either stack uh, bags in here folded or uh, put them on top of each other as a bit of a shelf to display bags. I just got a clipboard because uh, I'll need to have somewhere to have my bank account details and things in case people want to pay uh, that way rather than in cash. Then, so I bought two of those. Then I just got some paper uh, tags for pricing the bags. I was just going to have a flat poster with the different prices, but I've done that before with art prints and every second person still asks you how much something is. So I find it better to just have it on the actual item. And these are paper, they can just be recycled. I got some uh, cord for tying the price tags on to the bags. 
And then what have I got in here? Oh yeah, I just got some acrylic yarn. So this was about $2.50 for a whole ball. And I got four gray and four of this color. And what I'm gonna use these for is I'm gonna cape them up. Cape, I'm going to cake them up using my ball winder because I think they just look nicer like that. And I'm just gonna use them to stuff uh, some of the bags so people can kind of get an idea of how much uh, yarn you can keep in there. And I just thought it'd be a really nice way to display some of the bags with yarn in them. And then afterwards, this will be in perfect condition, just caked up and I will donate it because I'm not sure what I would use acrylic yarn for, but I'm sure someone else will use it. Uh, so yeah, or I might keep it and knit something for my niece. Uh, I have a little niece who's about to turn three. I could always knit her something small because it is super soft and she could be really rough with it. So maybe I'll do that. Uh, so yeah, that's everything I got for the display. I do also have uh, these little Notion pouches that I've made as well. So I'm gonna have to find another way of pricing these because I think it'll be a bit much to have a big tag attached. So I've got to think of a way to do those. And then I also have my uh, little ghost stitch markers, uh, which I'll probably just put into a dish and sell them individually and put a price on there. And then, yeah, I do have quite a bit of sewing left to do. So I'm gonna be spending the next uh, few weeks uh, sewing, but I have already made quite a few bags. So yeah, what I was thinking was either have them folded up kind of like this, so you can just see the top of the fabric, or I will have some of them displayed. So this is how I photograph them for my online stores. I have them like this, and I will have some of the yarn inside just to show how big they are. So if you have any ideas of how I could display these, definitely let me know down in the comments. Also, if you have any ideas of how I could price these, I think the smaller items, I will just have to put one price tag up uh, yeah, I'm really excited about it. I'll definitely let you know how the market goes <laughs> uh, when it happens. But I think I'm going to spend a little bit of time playing with this and uh, make a little mock setup on the island to kind of gauge how much room I have and how things are going to look. Okay, so while I'm getting this yarn ready to be caked up, I thought I would give you a bit of a book update. And it's not a very exciting one, I don't think, but the last time I think I talked to you, I was reading Exciting Times by uh, Nisha Dolan. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that right. I didn't finish that. I got halfway through it and I didn't like Verity before that by Colleen Hoover and I finished that and it was just a waste of time. So this time when I was about halfway through it and I had zero interest in any of the characters, uh, I just stopped reading it and took it back to the library and then I thought, great, I'm going to be in a reading slump for a while where no book interests me. But when I took Exciting Times back to the library, I saw a book on the cart waiting to be put back on the shelf called Alone With You in the Ether. And I have seen this book on another YouTube channel's, uh, they're like a book tuber, is that what they're called? And I had seen them mention this book, Alone With You in the Ether. So I just got it out of the library I read it in about two and a half days. Amazing book. I loved it. I cried real tears during it. There were bits that were so sad, but it had a really nice ending and I really liked it. So the premise of it is without giving too much away is it's two strangers who have their own kind of storylines going on as well. And they meet each other and they decide to have six conversations with each other. So it's really weird, but they just decide that their entire relationship is gonna be these six conversations. And it's just really beautifully written. It's written from different perspectives, like the character and a narrator and uh, just different things like that, which makes it quite interesting to read. But I, oh my gosh, I love that story. I think I, Will buy that book to have it in my collection because I would definitely reread that. So I will leave it linked down below because I can't remember who it was written by. Uh, but yeah, it was called Alone With You in the Ether. I loved it. Read the whole thing. A beautiful story. So that's given me my faith back in reading. So now that I've read that, I am going to read one of my books that I've thrifted. 
and I did have a comment I think about the toffee book which I haven't started I thrifted that last month so I think I will read that and I imagine that will go quite quickly so I'll let you know how that book goes but yeah alone with you in the ether if you like reading books about relationships uh, this one was really beautiful really beautiful um and then what else ah music so i think i'm the last person on the planet to start listening to uh what's his name noah khan his album stick season i don't know i heard about it on a knitting podcast where the knitwear designer had named a sweater called the stick season uh it was the Kreia bayer podcast and she mentioned that she had named the sweater after the song so i listened to it and the first time i didn't really like it but i listened to it a few more times and now i love it and i've been listening to his whole album so yeah if like me you hadn't heard of noah khan i'm pretty sure this album came out last year or the year before so it may even be before that so you've probably already heard of it but if you'd like something different to listen to uh noah khan and the album is called stick season so yeah now i'm gonna cake these up i'm going to do my cleaning for the day which is my washing machine filter so yesterday no a couple of days ago i did the cleaning washing machine cleaner that i bought in my grocery video that worked really well and now i just need to clean out the filter to cross that off my list so this is your public service announcement to clean your washing machine washing machine yeah washing machine filter uh if you haven't done that in a while and then i'm pretty sure it'll be almost time to go and get the boys but i want to talk to you about their capture wardrobes so i may do that later on today or i'll just carry on the video for tomorrow and talk to you about that in the morning okay so it's a couple of days later now different day same t-shirt but i'm editing this vlog and i rambled on for a long time so i'm going to talk about the kids capsule wardrobes in my next vlog which will be coming out really soon it's actually uh sorry i'm eating my lunch straight out of the fry pan why not um yeah it's the last day of term school term today so the boys will be on school holidays for two weeks so i'm not sure how i'll vlog in between that but i'll definitely talk about capture wardrobes but yeah i'm gonna end this vlog here because i rambled on for over 20 minutes and my computer does not like uploading anything that long so i'm gonna sit here enjoy my pasta straight from the fry pan and finish my kind of chores for the day and enjoy the last afternoon of quiet before the boys are home for the next two weeks but i hope you enjoyed this rambly vlog and i'll see you in the next one bye